Hi there everyone, welcome back up here to the loft on Weir Yard and uh, today it's a special day, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. I've got a uh, special guest, Les Cliff, so just turn around, Hello there he again, is. Everybody. And what we're going to be doing is on that bare blue behind, uh, it's going to become a back scene and he's going to actually do this from scratch. He's an amazing artist. You'll no have pressure, seen <laughs> no pressure at all, but um, you'll have seen some of his work on the diorama that we did for Hornby, but also the GMRC layouts. All of the back scenes on all three of those were Les's work, so I'm really looking forward uh, to seeing what he comes up with for me. So stick with us; it'll be great to have your company, and let's see this come together. <laughs> This is the great artist Les getting ready, looking at um, <laughs> what are the pictures you got on the, your phone? Um, so these are some of the landscapes which I sent you. Basically, this one that I'm going to try and use. And, and this is actually the, the Langdale in the Lake District. Oh, these right. are some pictures that I sent over to Les just for inspiration. So um, well, it seems an appropriate one that would probably fit. Yeah. Or, or an interpretation of it, shall we say? It's not going Definitely, to be. Definitely. Yeah. Um, like for like but that's my guide to work with and i think it's gonna it, it will give a great sense of yeah. depth and this is probably something that a lot of people can do with their model railways is um adding a back scene adds so much to a model in terms of making it look like the model continues and creating some quite dramatic scenery effects without actually taking up any space so we've got our blank canvas we've got our inspiration we've got our pastels so, oh, actually, that's a good point, Les. Um, talk me through what you've actually got down here. These are the materials you're going to be using. Basically, these are just some value craft soft pastels. There's a, a range of greys and whites and mm -hmm. a range of coloured ones there. And ye old faithful Harmony hairspray or whatever it is. And that's like a spray mount, just, which fixes yeah, stuff in place. Once we're, once we're both happy with what it is the only issue is that when you spray pastels it takes down the tonal quality yeah so then you have to work on top of them again so in, in a way it's a case of um making it perhaps more vibrant to, to start with, with than you want soft because it. you know it'll tone down and then we've got um some sponge um to act like a rubber rather than just using my fingers all the time and that'll kind of give that that help uh, to blend some that of the depth blur yeah. which makes things look and, like uh, much further some pencils away. i might have to do a few markings out um we've got a little piece of um stone walling to give me something that i can use at the front there not this isn't going on as a permanent but it's item. a guide presumably as a guide size. for height yeah and uh obviously to give that break between the, the railway and the actual blue background yeah, or the landscape. Yeah. So we'll be putting um, a mark out for that. And then the rest of it is just down to artistic interpretation and uh, hopefully over the next two or three hours I can achieve something on there that uh, meets with your approval. Oh, brilliant. Well, I'm really looking forward to this. Let's get to it. has left for the day and this 
it's just amazing what he's done so far. He's still got a lot of work to do. Uh, he's coming back uh, tomorrow. You can see he's taken on board that picture that uh, that I sent him. I sent him a few, but there was one particular one of uh, Langdale in uh, the Lake District, which uh, he really liked the look of, thought was perfect for this. And you can see, basically, there's Langdale. There it is. And uh, we've got the, uh, uh, the fells, everything in the background. Um, so, uh, yeah, a bit craggier here. The white showing the exposed limestone. It's great, isn't it? We took a few of the trees out here. You may have seen in the time lapse them just sort of disappear. Um, they've not disappeared. They're actually just over there in a big pile. And that's really just to give them better access. They're going to get glued back in uh, as soon as this is done. I need to go over with the hoover, but to be honest, I'm going to wait until after he's finished because it's just going to make some more chalk dust. And then along here, uh, just there, need to um, paint hard to the board because the clearance is so tight. But further along here, he's making a kind of dry stone wall out of card just to give a slight amount of relief um, to kind of bring the foreground and background, separate them from each other. Kind of like we've got here, I really like this now. This has kind of come together with the rock. So it's like we've got a crag here and then you know you see the distance behind. That works really well. Another area that I need to do some work on is over here. And what Les has suggested I really like. I'm going to leave uh, some of these, uh, well these two bits of rock off. And then I'm going to use the Woodland Scenic Shaper Sheet to start to create a crag and a uh, cliff face here. And he's talking about maybe getting some uh, rock climbers in at some point. And that would actually sort out this mess here where everything's kind of fiddled together. I just um, have like a, a big bluff. It's got to go down there. You maybe do a little bit in the distance behind the uh, military training center, but it'll really start to feel like there's a presence of uh, uh, jab like mountain as I've nicknamed this uh, this structure here with the tunnels through it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little bit of work with the woodland scenic shaper sheet here and try and uh, get a basis such that when he comes around uh, tomorrow evening it'll have all set and it might be able to use some watercolors um, like inks and stuff just to pick out the rocks and stones and create quite an interesting effect of a rock face here and um, yeah, hopefully that'll come together and we'll make too much mess over what I've already done. Uh, I'll take some of these trees out as well. I need to, I'll, I'll just take all of these out for now. They can go back in later. Um, and I think we're going to have something really special here. So this is the Woodland Scenics uh, Shaper Sheet. And this is very, very versatile. So this is what I'm going to be using. Catalog number C1179 shaper sheet and it's kind of like foil backed and then it's adhered to with the kind of it's like a plaster bandage but it's not it's a kind of fibrous mesh and it's great to uh, bully into shape and uh, it holds its shape and then you can apply plaster which mechanically bonds with that mesh sets really good and hard and it's actually freestanding uh, as it says they're strong pliable and holds high detail. Uh, it, this is really a great product. I cannot recommend it more highly. Um, discovered this comparatively recently, but uh, certainly where have you been, Shaper Sheet, all my modeling career? This is a great product. So here we are, we've got the cliff face in with the Shaper Sheet, plasters in, what a mess. But hopefully this is gonna uh, dry out okay, and then uh, build up the layers and it won't look like such an eyesore. One of the important things, keeping that tunnel mouth clean. So I've used some water and a clean brush just to make sure that the plaster that got onto the uh, the front fascia there was cleaned off before it set. So otherwise you've got all manner of problems. There's a little spot on that bush there. I'm gonna have to fix that with some scatter maybe. I'm gonna have to redo a little bit of um, the ground cover around here too, but it's not too bad. And hopefully that just kind of disguises the corner makes it look like a bluff or something. It's about um, and maybe an hour's worth of work. I was working quite slowly. Some of that is just trying to get the plaster to set. And then I set about it with uh, watercolor paints um, using Zoe's set. Hope she doesn't mind too much. Uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna, uh, lemon yellow, a little bit of leaf green, 
and black were the colours that I used in various quantities just to, to colourise that. Uh, at the moment there's some white spots showing, they're actually glue um, where I've been gluing bushes and stuff onto there. I also did a dusting over of the wet paint with some Woodland Scenics Fine Earth Turf uh, Lemon uh, Yellow Grass, it's sort of like a burnt grass and some green uh, powder as well and that just again gives the texture so it doesn't end up very smooth. Uh, around the bottom I've put a load of bushes in that piece of wood is holding up a tree whilst the glue sets and that's going to just kind of uh, finish off that gap there and really all it needs here is just a suggestion of uh, clouds above there at most um, which is what I'm going to suggest to Les that we do there. <laughs> dusted and Les has done an amazing job so you can see there the uh, suggestion of Langdale and uh, the Cumbrian fell stretching off and it just really sets the model off doesn't it done it right up into the corner we got the trees back into position there but then turning around here I like this bit here you can see it looks it reminds me a bit of the Peak District where you've got um, like a little outcrop with the the scenery beyond behind it and then the cliff face has turned out okay still waiting for some glue to dry and just propping that tree in just um, to uh, until the glue takes and then Les has done a little bit more scenery behind there as well a suggestion that the countryside goes on behind the military establishment and uh, demolish one of my signals Sorry. So um, I, I, it looks to be a clean break, so it's not a big issue. I can fix that. But uh, the man of the moment, the artist himself. <laughs> the villain. No, no, the artist. Um, an amazing job. So what do you think, Les? I'm pleased with it, but more importantly, are you? I am very pleased. Excellent. Um, it's far better than I could do. Right. So um, really, really glad with the work. And as people have seen with the time lapse, you make it look so effortless. <laughs> So sweating all the way through. It is quite warm up here, so <laughs> just got to plan the next one there underneath the monitor. That that's uh, going to be uh, a project for another day. But I think uh, that's going to be on a separate sheet altogether that can be. I think yeah. Put in because I can't reach over. And not that just area. that, we've got um, that gap in the wood as well, which would be a nuisance. So I think what we just do is measure that yeah. and work it out because there is a gap behind that wall, so we can slip it down behind a bit. Um, but we'll work that one out for now. Uh, from Weir Yard, up here in the loft, we're just enjoying the new back scene. So uh, thanks everybody for watching. I hope you really enjoyed this and found it a great informative video. Um, I know I have thoroughly enjoyed watching Les work. So until next time, you take really good care of yourself. Bye for now. Today's video has been brought to you in part thanks to the generous donation of my fans on Patreon. And an extra huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Michael Churchwood, Alec Ralph, Anthony Hunt, William Wade, Wayne Johns, Offshore Allen, OORail.co.uk, Tepic, and Michael Lockie. Without you guys, I couldn't do this. Thanks. Today's video has been brought to you by my books, Bringing Home the Stars, Twinkle Little Star, and also you can get the complete comic collections of All Over the House, Books 1, Books 2, and also the wacky zany Life of Nobty Mouse. Thanks and catch you later.